winning is expected at Wheeling Central. From the first practice to the last play of your career, you're expected to win. When the sun goes down on a Friday night, there's no feeling quite like it. And for Central fans, this feeling wouldn't be complete without one face in particular, Mike Young. With nine state championships, it's hard to picture Central football without him, but it's even harder to picture him without Central football. Well, you know, I, I think Mike has been a positive influence on all the players, not just my kids, all the players, and, and in a, you know, be quite honest with you, the Central community. I mean, Mike has become at Wheeling Central much more than a football coach, much bigger than the football program, especially since Doc Viglietta retired years back. Mike is no longer just the face of the football program. I mean, a lot of people you talk around this valley think Mike Young is now the face of the high school. I mean, he's, you know, he, he's been there through a lot of transition. Mike's been there through, you know, through Doc, through, this is, Becky's a third principal that, uh, that's been at Wheeling Central since Mike there. Mike has been, in, was instrumental in the, you know, this facility that the uh, Central gets to play on. So Mike is just, you know, he's no longer just a football coach at Wheeling Central. He's kind of become the face of the school. Well, it's a little bit, you know, I have a little bit different relationship with Coach Young than a lot of the other guys that have, have coached with him and that's because I'm married to his niece um, and I was actually my first ever coaching job was at Brook High School I was 19 years old it was the first year I ever coached before I came to Central and Coach Young was the head coach at St. Clairsville at the time I was assistant I was a 19 year old assistant at Brook High School and we beat um, St. Clairsville at Brook High School and uh, I, I that's when I was 19 and you know I wore my emotions on my sleeve and you know, I didn't understand how to manage. I wasn't a very good, I didn't lose well at the time. And I didn't understand, you know, how to balance the winning and the losing. And after the game was over, Heather and I, my wife now, were just dating at the time. And um, coach, we, we shook hands, congratula he congratulated us, I told him, great job. And he said, you know, why don't you come out to the house, Carol, his wife, and uh, he were having a little gathering and a get together. I thought that was a little weird because, you know, they just lost the game. But, so I said, absolutely, sure. So um, the game was at Brook. So Heather and I, we drove back to Wheeling, and then we went out to, to their house. And, you know, I, I remember asking him, Coach, you know, how do you do this? You know, you just lost. Brook and St. Clair's at the time were really big rivals. You know, how do you, how do you balance this? How do you do this? And he just looked at me and said, you know, it's just a game. You know, I, I'm a very lucky guy, and I have a lot of really good things going on in my life. I enjoy coaching. I love coaching. I love the kids. I love the competition. But it's just the game, and these are my friends, and these are my family, and this is what's important to me. Uh, it was coached with Jim Thomas, and uh, we were down in, I think it was Moorfield. And, um, you know, I was really intimidated. I knew Coach Thomas's sons. I went to school with them, but... Um, it was my first game working with Wheeling Central, and I was doing a game with George Kellis, and I got George Kellis and Coach Thomas and Mike Young. And, like, it's Ohio Valley high school sports royalty all around me, and I was really, really nervous. And, um, they, you know, George talked to everybody like he had known him for 30 years, and I had known these guys for about 60 seconds. And uh, Mike kind of started, he was the one that initiated a conversation with me, and um, we hit it off pretty good there. And... Of course, they went on to win the game and um, talked to him afterwards. And, you know, it's just when you know Mike Young for 30 seconds, it feels like you know him for 30 years. And it's been great ever since. He's fantastic to work with. Of course, I've known the Young family since I first came to Wheeling with the FBI. And at that time, uh, he was over in Ohio. And, uh, well, he graduated from high school in 1967, the year I came to Wheeling with the FBI. So he's a lot younger than me. But I, I knew his reputation as a football coach in St. Clairsville and really didn't get to know him until another memorable coach here, uh, J.T. Thomas, brought him on as an assistant football coach sometime about 1997. And that's when he and I became close and then in 1999 and 2000, I was asked to be the um, athletic director because Mickey Duffy uh, became sick and couldn't carry on. 
and uh, I was the volunteer athletic director for two years. And of course, uh, at that time, uh, Mike was well on his way to uh, the year 2000, was a state football championship year. So he and I became very close because I was the AD at that time. I took credit for all the wins. Well, well that's the thing. He was more than a successful coach. Mike, I loved his uh, determination. I, I loved his uh, discipline. And, and I loved the contributions he made to the community more, more than a coach. He was more... Uh, and he was a great coach, but he was also a great member of the central community. He was, he, he was an athletic director, of course, and dean of students. But he, he taught his kids about life as much as football. And I loved the loyalty that he showed all those years to not only his players, but his coaches and, and the students at the school. Mike started coaching in 1971 at St. Clairsville High School as an assistant coach under George Strager. He was named head coach of the Red Devils in 1988. In 1997, Young had the opportunity to return to his alma mater under head coach Jim Thomas. He remained assistant coach until 2005, when coach Thomas passed away suddenly. During this difficult transition, Mike used what he had learned from the legendary coach and made sure his legacy lives on. So, my dad died when I was uh, 20 years old, 20 years old. Um, and then I started coaching at Wheeling Central my first couple of years, and Coach Thomas was the head coach then. And coach Thomas you know, became kind of like my second father. Um, and I, I was very, very close with Coach Thomas. And uh, when Coach Thomas passed away, in a, back in 2004, um, I remember Coach Young and I talking about, you know, what's next for this school, what's next for this program, what's next for this group of kids, what's next for this group of, of, of coaches. And he, I will say reluctantly at first, um, applied for the job, and he did it because the people that, care about Wheeling Central asked him to do that. And as a head coach, working with him as a head coach, not just as an, as an assistant, but working with him as a head coach, that was my first experience with him, him stepping into the void filled by Coach Thomas. And I'm gonna be very honest, we made the right decision at that time, because I don't know that there are too many other people that could have stepped into those shoes to fill the void left by JT. Uh, it was obvious that Mike Young had respect for Coach Thomas, and Coach Thomas had respect for Mike Young, and they worked brilliantly together. And when Coach Thomas passed away, um, a lot of programs would have taken a hit. It would have taken, you know, there would have been turmoil over who to hire and a process, and, you know, there would have been different factions pulling the, the team in different directions. And with Mike Young, there was none of that. He just stepped right in, and it was like a handoff, you know? Coach Thomas just handed a ball right to Mike Young and they started winning right away. Well, that was, uh, the school made a wonderful decision at that point. We all knew, knew Jim, of course, G Jim grew up with me in, in the same neighborhood and, and I couldn't think of anybody that would have been more suitable or m more uh, determined and, and loyal to take over the, the central program that Mike Young, he had tons of experience. You know, he was at St. Clairsville High School for, for like 25, 26 years. He was an assistant football coach for a long time uh, under the, the legendary George Strager, who also coached at, at Willing Central uh, for a time back in the er, early 60s. Mike became the head coach and very successful there. He took a team to the second round of the Ohio playoffs. And, and then he came back to Central as an assistant coach under Jim. And they worked well together. But uh, when the time came in 2005, we were, we were all devastated by the death of Jim Thomas. I, I mean, he, he was a wonderful representative of the school. But M Mike has stepped in and, and really been very much a great representative of uh, Willing Central. And I was just 
proud and, and pleased when he got the job. And then six state championships followed. The, the program reached even greater heights than, than it had under Coach Thomas. And of course, he had some great players along the way. You don't win without great players. But, but his, uh, as I said earlier, loyalty to his coaches, to the students, to the football team, has really been, been instrumental in the school's success. Also, Mike, the time he was athletic director, I never saw a guy spend so many hours at his job. I mean, in addition to being a football coach, he, he was there every night for a sports event. It was girls basketball, boys basketball, soccer, tennis. I mean, Mike was everywhere where they had a match, which, which really said a lot. In fact, I used to kid him and say, don't you ever go home. You know, he's trying every way he can to bring out the best in everyone that he works with. So it was more of a, um, he was more of my mentor growing up as I was in high school and um, really trying to get the best out of me and all my friends. And then when I transitioned into being a coach, which was incredible, um, we really became a lot closer because we, you know, we're dealing with everything side by side. And um, he just, everything that he could help me with, he's helped me with. Um, and it is, it's an amazing experience to be able to work with him side by side. Coach always is happy to give fatherly advice to whomever's willing to listen, be it player, be it coach. I mean, he's going on 70 years old, and I say that in a good way. Um, he's seen a lot of things. He's, he's encountered a lot of things. There's probably not a thing or something that one of his current players or coaches, honestly, are, that are going through that he hasn't experienced, had a student athlete experience, or dealt with over the course of his, you know, 40 some odd years of coaching. So it's, experience is, is a very, very important thing. Whenever, a lot of times when you interview coaches, they kind of give you the, the coach speak, you know, we're gonna go out and block, we're gonna go out and tackle, and we're gonna try to do it better than the other team. Um, Mike has perfected that. Like his coach speak, you think you're getting an answer, and it's really not an answer, but you're okay with that answer, and that's fine. Um, every time, uh, we go to interview and we say, well, how about this quarterback? No matter who the quarterback was, how about this young running back? And inevitably, you know he's going to go, well, we've got 12 seniors on this team. I've got two backup corners who are seniors, and they're going to lead this team. I've got a lineman, and he's a senior. Nothing about the people you asked about. We're looking forward to this year. We've got a lot of replacements with uh, the seniors we lost. They were quality young men. He'll talk about the seniors, and that's his loyalty to guys that have been there for four years and paid the price and have been there in the practices and know what it takes to win because they saw other guys do it. No matter who you ask about, he tells you about the seniors. Coach Young maintains his cool. Uh, and that's one of the things I've seen. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a penalty directed at him on the football field. And he's one of those guys who puts obstacles in front of players and then he helps them get over the obstacle and he helps them get across that finish line. And, and he takes a personal interest in the player, which a lot of coaches, I don't, a lot of the coaches want to win, win, win. Now, it's been said many times that sometimes you don't know whether Mike really has that drive to win or whether he just hates to lose. And Mike's my friend, and I think he just hates to lose. I would say recently something that jumps out in my mind would be uh, the state championship this past year. Um, it really hit to me just how important he is when we were in the locker room before the game and Jason Ryan told him to step out of the locker room for a second. And uh, Coach Ryan had a moment with all the kids and he was telling them, you know, as much as this game is about you kids, this one is for Coach Young. Listen to me, I just asked him to leave. There isn't a thing in the world that that guy would not do for you, for any single one of you. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Everything that he's done for you, right? Is there anything that that man wouldn't do for you? Luke, how many times has he gone to bat for you? Kurt, how often has he had your back? Vinny, Logan, Anthony, how has he welcomed you here? He 
tried to take this world from him. They tried to take his world. He could have folded. He could have gone away. But he wouldn't do that. Do you know why he wouldn't do that? Because he loves you. Do you know the biggest way that you can repay him for everything he's been through? It's the state championship. Please, for the next 48 minutes, give that man everything that you have to give because he gave it for you. Do you understand me? Sure. All right. And I think everybody felt that very deeply, and we all recognized that this, with everything that was going on in the past, um, this was definitely for him. And the kids really responded to that. And just seeing them respond in such a positive way really showed to me how much he impacts everyone around him. Um, he always tells them the truth. I think that's the most important thing. And I think as coaches, um, it's really important that kids know where they stand and that when you tell them something, that they believe you. And I, I, I say this all the time, and I'm probably going to say it two or three other times during this interview. Coach Young's biggest asset, his greatest quality as a coach, is his ability to get people to do what he wants them to do. He manages people, be they players and be they coaches, probably better than anybody I've ever been around. And I mean that not only in a, in a coaching sense, but I mean in any boss I've ever had. He's probably the best manager of people that I've ever been around. And I try to, you know, like I say all the time, you know, with Coach Young, you always got to pay attention because generally he's getting you to do what he wants you to do without you knowing he got you to do it. Well, during his years of coaching and, and my years at full-time and part-time at the paper, I've always found him to be honest with me, uh, willing to answer any question, uh, willing to to play down at any criticism we've heard of the kids and, and the school, because, you know, there's been a lot of criticism about Central over the years, but Mike's always stood up to the task and uh, made people believe that, the, that what they were doing was right. Logan, you're to three. Mike faced an uphill climb in the 2017-2018 season. He had a team of kids that started the season two and four and risked not even making the playoffs. Monday, Monday. Down. Set. Cut. Uh, it was a rough start. It was it was 0-2, and, and there were a lot of naysayers out there. And down in my heart of hearts, I said, I think that Mike is going to be able to figure this out. And he had a lot of new players. He had a lot of young players. He had players coming from Bishop Donahue who played uh, to a different scheme of things when they were down there. And uh, I think that the first two games if you wanted to equate it to baseball, it was like the Grapefruit League in Florida. It was spring training. Those first two games were spring training. And uh, come game three and game four, we, we got some breaks. The ball bounced our way, if you will, a couple of times. And, and that's the way uh, sports are. Um, they do, the ball does bounce in funny ways. And they bounced in our direction. And then after that, uh, it was uh, Katie bar the door. And uh, I don't think there was any doubt. Even, um, you know, people were down a little bit after the Lindsley game. But it was a learning experience for not only him, but that young group. Because he had gone several years where he had come close, but no cigar. But this year was the cigar. Um, this year was... So we never stopped coaching and the kids never stopped working. And that's something that we continue to preach and preach and preach every day. You know, Coach Young's really big on let's go to practice and get better. Coach them up. But we have to go to practice and we have to get better. We knew at the beginning of this season this, we, had, we were going to have some growing pains. We graduated a lot of really good football players. A lot of, a lot of touchdowns walked out that door when that class graduated. Um, and we knew – that we did have a very talented but raw. And when I say immature, I don't mean in the, in the, in, in the way that immature is a negative thing. But um, football-wise, we were a very immature group of, of, of players. Week one. By week 15, because Coach's mantra was, let's keep getting better, let's keep getting better, let's keep getting better, let's work. 
Don't pay attention to the scoreboard. Don't pay attention to what our, our, our record is. And as hard as that is to get kids to do, I believe that we got them to do that. We never stopped coaching. They never stopped playing. And by, if we would have played anybody on our schedule that beat us the week after we won a state championship, well, there's no question in mind we will beat them too. Well, as in, was I skeptical? Uh, definitely. I think there's, there's a moment, you know, every coach has to be realistic of what's going on. And we, you know, I was skeptical when we um, lost East Hardy. And I just didn't know if we were going to be able to come back from that. Because that's, I mean, going down 0-2, that is just, that's really tough. And we were getting into the hardest part of our schedule because we had a crazy schedule this year. But that's how I want it to be. You know, I want it to be tough. But, yeah, I was definitely skeptical. I didn't know if our kids could come up from such a comeback like that. And um, after the Martins Ferry game, we made adjustments in the coaching staff with personnel playing where. And it really took off from there. And our kids bought into what we were selling them. And the rest is history. I had my doubts that we would win it all, be honest with you. Um, when we were three and four, I think we were at one point, I, I, I didn't have any doubts we would make the playoffs. I did not know to what extent some of the other schools in the state were, how good they were, so I, I, had, I did have my doubts. It's the fact he had something to prove. Like in all the other years, he just had to go win and had to convince kids to buy in and do what he wants them to do and be in the right spot and be committed to the team. I think he really wanted to win. It was beyond blocking and tackling. You know, it was beyond who was on his staff and who wasn't on his staff. It was uh, about not proving that he needed to win because everybody knew he could win. It's going out there and winning when you know you had people that were on the outside rooting against you. Everybody has detractors, but I think it was safe to say that there were people rooting against him. He'll tell you, it's, it's, he'll tell you that it's like all of the other ones, um, but it's not. You know, um, we were 0 and 2, we were 2 and 3, and we were 3 and 4, and at some point during this football season. And there's not a person that believed that what ultimately happened would have happened. He's too old. It's passed him by. It's time for him to move on. And then, the, not even to mention all of the, the ugly things that happened in the offseason, um, you know, it, if you gave him some truth serum, I think that he would tell you that, that this is the most special, the most important one for a number of reasons. Just because the kids grew up as much as they did, the guys on the staff stood behind him through a really tough time, and I think the community um, – rallied around him in a really difficult time. And because of all those things, I, I think that he probably felt an undue amount of pressure to win it this year than any of the other ones. Well, after everything that happened, um, the pressure really was, I don't want to say it was all on him, but there was a lot of pressure on him individually. And he felt that himself. And all of us coaches could definitely see it early on in June and August in the beginning of the season. You know, he, he was um, very eager to get back and doing what he loves to do since it was trying to be taken away from him. And this year happening how it happened, I mean, this, I feel like it just caps off his legacy. You know, his first year as a head coach, one of his best friends, his mentors, JT Thomas, passed away, and they won a state championship. And, I mean, that's just the start of a brilliant legacy by him and the coaches that stayed with him throughout those years. And, um, you know, two 14-0 seasons. Uh, this one, I remember in an interview he had, he said the pressure is always high and the expectations are higher. And when you haven't been to the big show and – six years they get a lot higher and uh he said that um getting here getting to where we were in the state championship was an incredible f feat that we did and winning it i just think i can't think of anything that could be better for his legacy than that this is different because they're young players 
we only had a handful of seniors. And when you win a state championship with some freshmen played, sophomores, juniors, they're coming back. And it's like uh, the call of the wild. When, when an animal has tasted blood, uh, he's going to be back at it even more ferociously. And I think you're going to see an unbelievable season for the next two years. And who knows after that? I mean, winning begets winning. After battling through all the adversity, they advance to the state playoffs. The Knights gain momentum throughout the tournament, finally making the state finals. We've accomplished a lot together. We've been in battles, we lost. It's not a good feeling. It's not a good taste. It's not what we are, it's not what we want to be. We cannot, all right, we cannot do anything tonight but go out and play every play because it could be your last one. Play every play. You've heard me say, everybody's one play away from being a starter. He's one play away from not being one too. You guys play the way you're coached to play. Do your job on your assignment. Defensively, what's the key? Communicate, right? And then we gotta attack. Everybody gets to the ball. You guys watch that kid run last night? Broke all those tackles. You know why he did? He didn't want to go down. He didn't want to be tackled. You have to run that way. You have to tackle that way. Relentless. Relentless. Everybody gets to the ball. Do your job. Wrap up. Get off on the ball on the snap. Know what the cadence is. Don't give them five yards. If you make a mistake, forget about it. Get ready for the next play. If you don't do something right, don't beat yourself up. You got the next play to recover. Everybody understand what I'm saying right now? Everybody in on what we're saying right now? This is a team. When you're in a team, all right, when you're in a family, you're all together. You gotta sit down and meal together. You gotta accept one another. You might not like everything going on, but you gotta love and respect everyone at that table. We're at that table tonight. This is our table tonight. Do your job. We will come back off this field victorious. Trust me when I say that. Do your job. We know what they're going to do, don't we? We know what we're going to do, don't we? All we got to do is execute. But play with passion. Play with heart. It's contact sport, right? We got to make contact. We're going to go out and hit. Or be hit. We're going to hit. We're going to play one play. We're going to get up and play the next play. Four quarters. The game this afternoon, how many of you listened to it or heard about it? Heck of a first half. And then somebody grumbled. Can't have that happen. we got to stay the course for four quarters. Stay the course for four quarters. Somebody else will grumble. We will not. Because we're together. Every play, like your last one. Anybody have any questions on anything that you gotta do? Read, react, and run, Luke. Adam, read your key, right? Defensive backs, know what you have. Play the ball. They put the ball in the air, it's ours. They put the ball on the ground, it's ours. We run like the wind. We run hard. Every play. Stay on your block till you hear the whistle. Get off your block. Get off your block until you hear the whistle. Make attack. Make play. Okay? We can do this, guys. You've done it. How many weeks? 14 weeks, right? With a bye week in there, we practiced hard, right? We're going to do it a lot tonight.
they went on to beat St. Mary's and claim Mike's ninth West Virginia State Championship. With all of the challenges and adversity faced throughout the season, the Knights managed to rally behind their coach and earn another title for Central Catholic High School.